Welcome to Karis Daily Live Bible Study. Join believers from around the globe to study the Bible with Andrew Womack and instructors from Karis Bible College. Hello and good evening. I want to welcome you to Karis Daily Live Bible Study. My name is Julianne Harris and I will be your hostess this evening. So Tuesday nights are really special. They were the... Uh, originally we only had Bible study on Tuesday nights and so there's something special that happens on Tuesday nights and so let me explain it to you every Tuesday night we do Bible study notes so what that means is as Pastor Greg shares tonight um, if you sign up for the Bible study notes next week Monday morning you will get an email with the notes of what he teaches this evening so that is really special but you have to sign up for it so how you can do that is you can go to awmi.net slash study you're going to fill in your information and when you do that for the first time you're entered into a drawing for a free product so I want to uh, make sure and let everyone know who won last week last week the free drawing was Life Foundations by Mike and Carrie Pickett and the winner of that was Sharon Butler so Sharon um, our teams will be reaching out to you to get you that free product and then this evening we are giving away Pastor Greg Moore's uh, book uh, Flowing in the Supernatural so it's activating the gifts of the spirit. It's absolutely powerful. I would encourage you to sign up for those Bible study notes and then uh, you're entered into the drawing. Also, this is an interactive Bible study, meaning we want questions from you. As you listen to Pastor Greg share this evening, I know I know that you're going to have questions and we want those questions. So please, in whatever forum you're watching, go down to the chat section, type those questions in, and then we're going to get to as many of your questions as we possibly can towards the last 10 to 15 minutes of the program. We also would love for you to interact with us by becoming a partner or by giving. You know, I uh, every time I host, I always announce that because it's not that, you know, we need money. Yes, yes, the ministry needs money in order to do the ministry, but guess what? what this ministry is God's ministry and so the reason that I always bring up you giving is for your benefit you can actually prosper God can open up the doors of blessing to you if you trust him in your finances and how do you trust him in your finances is by giving so I would cons I would ask you to consider becoming a partner or simply giving you can go to awmi.net slash give or give us a call at 719-635-1111 I also want to mention that we have some upcoming events like this is uh, pretty hardcore for my world <laughs> over at Karis so um, next week we have men's advance so for all of you men out there you need to come to men's advance you got Andrew Womack you got Billy Epperhart you got EW Jackson you have Jeremy Pearson they will all be teaching next week at men's advance and that will be March 9th through the 11th yes 9th through the 11th and then the following week are you ready for it it's campus days this campus days is going to be absolutely amazing that is going to be March 15th through the 17th you will not want to miss it if you've ever had an incline to come to Bible school come and taste and see what Karis Bible College is all about March 15th through the 17th also after that we have the well, let me see. Oh, yeah, God with us. So this is a live uh, theatrical production that we do, which is absolutely life transforming. So it's a great opportunity to invite your neighbor, invite your unsaved friends and come and see God with us. That is going to be April 7th and 8th. And then after that, we're coming to Chicago for a Gospel Truth Conference. So for more information on all of these events, to sign up, to buy tickets uh, to the God with us production, go to awmi.net slash events. Um, also, I just wanted to mention that we have prayer ministers available to you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So no matter what time you're watching this, if you need prayer, do not hesitate. Give them a call right now at 719-635-1111. And don't forget, we do these live Bible studies five days a week. So let me go over the schedule on Mondays and Fridays. We have live Bible study at 10 a.m. Tuesdays and Thursdays is at 6 p.m. And Wednesday is at 7 a.m. So calculate that out. Tune in while we're live and be discipled by the fresh word of God that we are taking the time, well, they're taking, the, the pastors and the teachers are taking the time to share with you. It's absolutely
absolutely amazing and I'm super blessed to be a part of it. And so those are all my announcements. Whew. Now I get to introduce Pastor Greg Moore, who is, uh, he is the executive director of ARMY, which is a organization for pastors and ministers. Right. It's absolutely powerful. Uh, he's the executive director of that. He's also the um, director of ministry school and third year yes. and third year ministry Paris. school which personally I think is the best just it saying <laughs> probably because I went to it to I that. did graduate from it and so he uh, is such a blessing and an amazing teacher so I know you're going to be blessed so I'm handing it over to you thanks so much Julian yes. and you know before I start tonight I just had this in my heart to share with someone who's watching tonight specifically and you just feel very alone and I've got a word for you today that you are not alone, that God is with you, and He's speaking to me, to you, through me, to, to tell you that you, you are not alone. Amen. That's a lie from the enemy. You are not alone. He's with you. He's, his presence is right there with you. And if you'll draw close to Him right now, I'm telling you, you will feel and sense and know His presence. We break off that uh, depression and that the, the lies of isolation Amen. and fought over, over everyone that's watching that, that's feeling this way. And Father, I pray that you manifest your presence right now and heal that, that heart Amen. in the name of Jesus. Yes. Now, I want to encourage you to, to go to our prayer line. Amen. Okay. At, you know, go to the Lord first, but then, you know, go to the prayer line and let somebody agree with you. Yes. That can that can speak the word of God over you. Just go to call 719-635-1111. And that yes, that is God talking to you. Amen. 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 So um, I've got a, a great message tonight on can, just answering the question: Can women minister and teach in the church? Okay, and uh, and just before I share that, uh, and you may want to you may want to call a, a, a maybe text a friend or relative if you've had this this question. We're going to open up the Word of God and show you uh, the answer to that question. But before I do, I want to share some funnies with you. This is uh, and th this is a mothers described by second graders. Oh no. <laughs> Here's some questions. Why did God make mothers? Well, she's the only one who knows where the scotch tape is. <laughs> Mostly to clean the house, another one said, and, and then to help us get out of there when we were getting born. <laughs> <laughs> How did God make mothers? He used dirt just like for the rest of us. Uh, <laughs> magic plus superpowers and a lot of stirring, uh, <laughs> one child said. And then another one said, God made my mom just the same like He made me. He just used bigger parts. <laughs> <laughs> what ingredients are mothers made of? The one child said, God makes mothers out of clouds and angel hair oh. and everything nice in the world and one dab of mean. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Second child said, well, they had to get their start from men's bones. Then mostly string, I think. <laughs> Why did God give you your mother and not some other mom? Mm. Uh, one child said, we're related. <laughs> the other child, another child said, God knew she likes me a lot more than other people's moms like me. <laughs> what kind of little girl was your, was your mom? My mom has always been my mom and none of that other stuff. <laughs> Another child said, I don't know because I wasn't there. But my guess would be pretty bossy. <laughs> Another child said, they say she used to be nice. <laughs> what, did, what did mom need to know about dad before she married him? Well, she, he needed, she needed to know his last name. Another child said he had... She had to know his background, like, is he a crook? Does he get drunk on beer? <laughs> why, did your mom, why did your mom marry your dad? Uh, because my dad makes the best spaghetti in the world. Aww. My mom eats a lot. 
Another child says she got too old to do anything else with him. <laughs> My grandma says that mom didn't have her thinking cap on. <laughs> oh, this is too funny. Let me share a couple more. Who's, who's the boss at your house? Mom, you can tell by room inspection. She sees the stuff under the bed. Another child said, I guess mom is, but only because she has a lot more to do than dad. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is funny. If you could change one thing about your mom, what would it be? Oh no. Uh, well, she has this weird thing about me keeping my room clean. I'd get rid of that. <laughs> Another child said, "Well, I'd make my mom smarter. Then she would know it was my sister who did it, and not me." <laughs> and then the third child said, "Well, I would like for her to get rid of those invisible eyes on the back of her head." <laughs> <laughs> well, that was greatness. Praise God. Uh, so. What's in my heart? What's in my heart tonight is uh, is to help uh, women, really free women, all over the world. I um, I was uh, I attended uh, several denom uh, denominational churches before I was born again, and and they uh, you know quoted these verses that I'm going to read uh, from 1 Corinthians 14. Uh, and then First uh, Timothy two, uh, that that essentially they boiled it down and said women can't speak in church, and they, and and they, but yet these same denominations, and I, I'm not condemning any church or any church group or denomination, but they they would they would uh, not allow women to get on a platform or do anything or preach or teach in in their church service their main church service, but it was all women back in the children's building. It was, it was women teaching home Bible studies, and it was women, they would allow women to go out on the mission field. And it just seemed to be so, um, something's wrong with this picture, and we're not really getting a full picture of what the Scripture is saying. And so, you know, I, I, I'm a pastor or I pastored for, my wife and I pastored for 27 years, and I just wanted to, and I had some people who came to me with the verses that I'm going to read to you, and, and they were just, you know, well, well, now, Pastor Greg, we don't, you, you know, because I had some ladies doing the announcements and different things, and now we, the Bible says that women aren't supposed to talk in, in church, and I said, really? And so I just, it, it was a passion of mine to study out the Word, and and I and I'm trusting that this is going to help you. Maybe maybe you've got a revelation on it, but maybe something that I share from the Word tonight will help you, not only uh, help you to uh, free you, but also help you to free others. So First Corinthians 14 and verse 34, it says, "Let your women keep silent in the churches." And all the men said, "Amen." And for, for <laughs> that's not in the scripture. Oh, okay, okay. That was a little, a little license there. <laughs> yeah. Well, and all the religious men say, "Amen." For, Amen. For they're not permitted to speak, uh, for uh, but they are to be submissive, as the law also says. And if they want to learn something, let them ask their own husbands at home. For it is shameful for women to speak in the church. And then let's go to 1 uh, Timothy, 1 Timothy chapter 2. And these are the two passages that seem to uh, uh, speak to women not talking in church. And uh, 1, 1 Timothy chapter 2, and let's look at, uh, at verse 11. Let a woman learn in silence with all submission, and I do not permit a woman to teach or to have authority over a man, but to be in silence. For verse 13, for Adam was formed first, then Eve, and Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived fell into transgression. Nevertheless, she will be saved in childbearing if they continue in faith, love, holiness, with self-control. So, these verses that seem to prohibit all women from ministering in the church, first of all, let's look at the context because he is not speaking to the entire female gender. How do you know that, Pastor Greg? Because 
back in 1 Corinthians 14, it says, if they want to learn something, let them ask their own husbands at home. Which group of women have husbands? Mm, married. Married women. Yeah. Wives. And in 1 Timothy 2, the context is that he uses the example is Adam and Eve. What are Adam and Eve? It was the first husband and wife. And, and he said, if you follow what I'm saying, you're going to be saved in childbirth. And so, uh, what group of women should, should be bearing children? It would be a wife. And so, what's just that revelation alone, just understanding that this was not written to all women, because if it was written to all women, then, then, and he's telling you to go ask your husband at home, if you're not married, who are you going to ask? He said, you got to have, I'm talking to the group of women that have a husband to go home and ask this question to. And so, he's not, he's not talking to all women here. He's talking to wives. Amen. And, and uh, these passages that uh, seem, that are, th these passages are not forbidding women from ministering, but rather they're establishing a principle of order for wives when they do minister to maintain submission and respect for their husbands. In other words, he's saying, I don't allow you to use the platform of your ministry in any way, shape, or form to usurp authority over your husband, shame your husband, or try to straighten your husband out. That's, that's, the, that's the premise of what he's speaking about here. That's the principle. He's just, he's, and in fact, if you, if you understand the context of 1 Corinthians 14, and I encourage you to, you could go online to charisbiblecollege.org, or you could go to uh, my website, gregmore.com, and you could get a copy of my book, Flowing in the Supernatural, because I've got an entire chapter in there on the subject I'm talking to you about tonight. But if you understand the context of 1 Corinthians 14, it's the Apostle Paul setting principles in order mm -hmm. for the vocal gifts to operate. And he didn't just pull this, he, did, he wasn't just talking about setting things in order and then all of a sudden just say, you know, and by the way, I don't like women and I don't want them talking in church. No, this was a point of order, just like 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 13. Therefore, let him who speaks in a tongue pray that he may interpret. So, what's, that's a point of order. He's saying, I want, um, I want those that, if you're going to pray in a tongue, I want it interpreted. Verse 12 says, even so, since you're zealous for spiritual gifts, let it be for edification of the church. So, he's given instruction there. Verse, verse 27 says, if anyone speaks in a tongue, let it be two or at the most three, each in turn, and let one person interpret each tongue. And he's saying it, it should only be, he's given points of order here. He's saying if there's a message in tongues in a church service, only one, one person's to, to interpret each one. Uh, that, for, that forbids competitive interpretation. Then he's, then he's saying uh, no more than three, because after the first one you're going to forget the message. Uh, after the third one you're going to forget the message of the first one. Then, then he says in verse 28, if there's no interpreter, let him keep silent in the church. How would you know whether there's an interpreter in the church? Well, have you been in that church and have you seen someone interpret the, a tongue or, or are you willing to interpret it? But this, these are all points of order. Verse 29, let two or three prophets speak and let the others judge. But if anything's revealed to another who sits by, let the first keep silent. Paul is, is systematically establishing order for the vocal gifts to operate in the church. And when he gets down to verse 34, he's just, he's just telling wives, he's saying, listen, wives, I don't want you to use your platform of ministry, your vocal gift, either whether you're prophesying, preaching, teaching, to, for the purpose of 
exalting yourself above your husband, uh, shaming your husband, uh, you know, trying to take authority over your husband. In other words, Paul was establishing the, the principle of uh, the, uh, the principle of order that marriage is a higher priority to God above ministry, men, a man's or a woman's ministry. And this is, this is so clear to me once you, once you understand what Paul was talking about, and, and, he, was on, and he was only talking to wives. This is not Paul having a, a problem where, with gender prejudice and just saying only, only men could talk in the church. These passages are simply for, forbidding wives to use, their, use the church or their ministry as a platform to expose their husband's ignorance or, or maybe his carnality or establish authority over, over their husbands. That's, that's what he's saying here. And so uh, wives, he, he goes on to say in verse 34, they're to be obedient to their husbands. So again, he's, this is a husband-wife issue. This is not, you know, Paul was not a woman hater. And Paul was, was, did not, he was not filled with gender prejudice. God would not allow someone so disposed to write on his behalf and call it his word. He was simply establishing another principle of order about how the vocal gifts were to operate. And, and he was establishing the priority of, of uh, the uh, principle of, of uh, biblical marriage and, and the, the marriage relationship is a higher priority than someone's ministry. And the church leadership must never tolerate a wife's use of her gift, her teaching gift, prophecy, whatever, uh, to, to try to manipulate, try to straighten her husband out, um, or publicly embarrass her husband. You say, well, that's not, that, that, that's, that's not really reasonable. That's not, you know, possible. I mean, well, I pastored for 27 years. And can I tell you, it's not only possible, it's probable, okay? Um, listen, first of all, I can't imagine a more tentative place to be than to be a, a woman married to an imperfect man who has to trust her life in the hands of this person that she doesn't know is is following whether he's going to follow God or not. And, and so, you know, what, what, is the, what is a wife's temptation going to be then? You want to push your husband along, in, in, you know, after your image of what a spiritual leader should be. And, you know, that's why, that's why the Bible says in Colossians um, 3.19, husbands love your wives and be not bitter against them. Why would husbands be tempted to be bitter against their wives mm. because the wives are trying to be the, their husband's mama. Mm. And we don't need another mama. Amen. <laughs> and, and, but I understand the, the dilemma that wives have because their, their entire life is, is controlled by you know, the decisions of this husband who's supposed to be the head of the relationship and then he's not you know, and, and maybe he's carnal, or maybe he's not hearing God the way you are. And, and so what are you tempted to do? Come on, ladies, be honest. What are you tempted to do? You want to try to encourage him and push him and m even manipulate him into this spiritual leader so that, you, so that you're, you're not in, a, in such a, a predicament. And, and so what happens then? Uh, you know, women are, women are there, and I know some of them, okay, Marry, some married women have a chip on their shoulder because they've, they've suffered some abuse or neglect or something at the hands of a carnal, ignorant guy, okay? And so now they've got this platform of ministry, and so they have this feminist edge to them. Mm. And they're trying to, you know, that's the reason you know the reason why I'm sharing this tonight, guys? This should not be, this uh, cannot be shared 
as powerfully uh, and as objectively from a woman, yeah, from, a, from a woman's standpoint. And so I'm sharing that because I, I, I love women and I want to see their gifts released. Yeah. And, and, and I, have, I hated it when, when we were under this thing that in the stigma that women couldn't talk in church. My pastor was a, a John Osteen, Joel's dad. And he said, you know, I tried to keep the women from talking, but he said, it didn't work. Oh. <laughs> it just, it just, he said, try that, try that. It just doesn't, you just can't. So anyway, so w when I was pastoring, I had this, um, I had Wednesday night services where I would allow a, a lot like we do here. I would teach and then I would allow questions. And so this one Wednesday night, uh, after I finished teaching, this gal lifts her hand, you know, and, and, and she says, now, Pastor, she said, I, I've got a good friend of mine who's got a carnal husband, and he smokes and he drinks a little bit of beer, and, you know, he comes to church about maybe once a month, maybe not even once a month, and, you know, he's just, he doesn't read his Bible much, and, and you know, he... He just, what, what, would you, what would you tell me, what, what kind of advice would you tell me to tell her to, how to deal with this? Well, everybody in the church <laughs> knew that the elephant in the room was, was, was sitting right next to her. She was talking about her husband, and he hadn't been to Wednesday night service. And here she is asking me a question. And she's using that platform to try to get me to straighten him out. Mm -hmm. And I knew exactly what, he was, what she was doing. And everybody around knew what she was doing. So you know what I did? I said, uh, ma'am, I called her name, whatever, Gertrude, Militude, Mil whatever her name was. I said, I said uh, you know what you need to do, Bertha or Gertrude, whatever? <laughs> You need you whatever go, your name is. You go. I told her I named her by her name. But okay. Anyway, I don't want to. That wasn't her name. No, no, no. Anyway, but I said you need to ask, you need to go home. Ask your husband at home. Yeah. Ask your husband that question. That's, good. That's exactly what the Bible's telling us here. And I've heard people teach that. Well, what what Paul really meant here? The reason he wrote this was because there were women uh, in that day and time. There were women who uh, sat on one side of the church and the men sat on the other side of the church and the women were yelling over to their husbands. Well, maybe that was true, but then what you're telling me then is then we just need to take our gray scissors and cut this out of the Bible because we don't, have, we don't do, have that form of habit of worship anymore. Guys, listen, we've got to examine the Word of God and take it as it is. And I'm telling you here that what God is telling us uh, it's, it's the same principle as what Revelation 2.20, Jesus told the leaders uh, in that church, re refused to tolerate Jezebel hmm. or witchcraft or control. In other words, don't, I do not allow a woman to use, a wife to use her ministry to manipulate or control, uh, especially to uh, shame or embarrass her husband. And uh, 1 Corinthians 11 and verse 5 um, says, But every woman who prays or prophesies with her head uncovered dishonors her head, for that one, and uh, for, for that is one and the same as if her head were shorn. He's not advocating here women wearing hats on their head. That's not what he's saying, ladies. He's saying, I want you to stay under authority. And when he says, every woman who prays or prophesies out, un, out from underneath authority, which he's implying, again, he's talking to wives here. He's not talking about all women, because only a wife would have to submit to the authority of her husband. But how would you know whether she prayed or prophesied if she couldn't talk in church? Mm. How would you know that? And he's saying, look, well, what I want you to do is when you do pray, when you do prophesy in church, I want you to do it in a respectful way. See to it that it doesn't dishonor your husband. That's exactly what he's saying here, guys. And, and that's what 1 
Timothy 2, 11 and 12 is saying, I do not allow the church to be used by any wife to instruct her husband in an attempt to rebel against or usurp his authority. That's the principle that, that he's bringing out here. And, um, and, and then he, it's, and it's just a command to husbands in Colossians 3 to deal with uh, about love your wives and don't be bitter against them. It's, it's, a, it's a, uh, a, you know, a command to husbands to deal with resentment in your heart for attempt for your wife's attempt to move you along spiritually. And so these verses are not forbidding a woman from ministering in the church, but establishing order in the church in the use of the gifts of a wife's ministry. He's not even talking to single women here. He's just talking to wives. Now, let me give you some examples and then we'll open it up, up for questions. New Testament examples of women ministering in the church. So, Acts 2, 17. And it will come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out of my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Mm. Now, how are you going to know if women aren't supposed to talk in church? How are you going to know that the daughters are prophesying if you can't hear them prophesy? And if they're not supposed to talk in church, why would the Bible here advocate that in the last days he's going to pour out of his spirit on all flesh and sons and daughters are going to prophesy? I, you know, this is just, it's crazy. Amen. Uh, that, it's, it's, just, it's, it's just crazy. In Acts 21, verses 8 and 9, it says, Four daughters of Philip prophesied. Mm -hmm. And they prophesied in, in, a, in some public setting where other people heard them prophesy. <laughs> now, if, they weren't, if women weren't supposed to talk in, in church, uh, then why would, why would the Bible say that it was a, why, would, why wouldn't the Bible say that it was wrong for them to prophesy? And then 1, uh, 1 Corinthians 14, 31, it says, you may all prophesy, men and women. Listen, my brother and sister. Um, Put your axe down, okay? Let's stop, uh, or your sword, throw, put your sword away. Let's stop limiting the wonderful gifts and the grace that's, that's in uh, uh, the female gender, and let's release them, but certainly let's, let's admonish the wives to make sure that whenever they do uh, release their gifts that they do it in a respectful way, not with this feminist gen, uh, gender, you know, bitterness chip on their shoulder, but where they, they're not trying to straighten all men out. They're not, they don't have a chip on their shoulder, but they're just ministering the love of God and the truth of God's Word. I want to free tonight all of you, uh, all, all of you beautiful women who have gifts on the inside of you you have a place in the body of Christ, and we need your voice, we need your ministry, and I free you tonight uh, to just walk in the liberty that God has for you. We need you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Man, that's awesome. Thanks, God. <clears throat> I'm going to jump ahead of the line of the that's fine. tremendous questions that are coming in. Because, you know, if, if Paul, like you say, not if, Paul was talking about being in order of the, the vocal gifts, right? right? So, do husbands not do the same thing to their wives? So, why would he just address the women? Or do husbands not do that? Well, husbands are not, the reason he didn't address husbands, he addressed husbands about being bitter. Okay. okay. But a husband is not so apt to uh, Air attempt the to, yeah, or to try to straighten his wife out. He's, he already has authority in the home. He's the head, okay. he's, the, he's the head of the home. He's not uh, as tempted to, to do that. Okay. Yeah. That makes yeah. sense. Just a more of a natural thing. Though, you know, not every man wears the pants in the family. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I, can, I can tell you that. Okay. Very true. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> okay, well, that's awesome. Thank you for answering yeah. that. So Diane on Facebook says, here in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania, we have many denominations like Brethren Mennonite that the women must wear coverings. My grandma did, and there is a scripture on that too, which you already talked about. Uh, and it says, why do these scriptures uh, go away? Maybe she's meaning, why do they not go away? Like 1 Corinthians 11, 5, but every woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered dishonoreth her head. Well, listen, I understand. I'm not, I'm not condemning uh, denominations and, and church movements that believe that this means that you need to, you need to have uh, your head covered or you need to put, wear a hat. I've, I've been to some churches where all the women are wearing hats. You know, and, and in, in, in your case, they're, they're all wearing th this covering. Well, but he's, he's taught the head. If, if you go back to the context, you know, he's talking about, I want you to know the head of every man is Christ, the head of the woman, the head of the wife, not, not of every woman, uh, is the husband. Mm -hmm. And so the head, if you have your head uncovered, mm -hmm. you're, you're, that may means you're coming out from underneath the authority of your husband who is the head of the relationship. It's, it's symbolic and I, I'm not going to condemn anybody who wears something to prove, to, to demonstrate that, but he's not trying to restrict women and saying you got to put a hat on your head or any kind of covering. He's talking about, he's, the, the, princi the principle here is that, that there's, there's respect in the relationship between the husband and wife. Now it goes both ways. We're, we're to submit to one another in the yeah, fear of the Lord, true. okay? So uh, it's not just the man rules in, in a dominant way over, over the wife. I'm not advocating that at all. Amen. Man, that's powerful, Pastor. Uh, Kim on YouTube, I like this question. She says, I am just curious to hear Pastor Greg's thoughts on why there are no qualifications for women elders. Well, you know, I'm not, uh, I'm not going to, you know, tell you that I have, a, I have the answer Kim, on, on that, I will tell you that it's a challenge, okay, for me, for a husband-wife team to be elders, equal elders. And the reason for that is because it's not that a woman couldn't be an elder or a woman doesn't have wisdom, but it's that you've got a husband and wife then that are brought into a leadership role where then... She, you're, you're attempting them to vote against one another, uh, you know. And I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to do that. Now, some cases it can work, but uh, listen, there, there are female ministers, there are female pastors. Um, I don't have any problem at all having a, a female elder, um, but I think, you know, the, the, you know, in most of the elder, the relationships I had, most of the elders that I had were men, and it was because they were head of their their home and their wives would rather have them function in that leadership role. But I have no problem at all, uh, you know, having a woman as an elder. I have no problem at all a, a woman pastoring a church. In fact, I'm on the board of, t of two churches where the w woman is a pastor, but their, their relationship with their husband is in, is in divine order. And so, uh, uh, you know, there's there's lots of examples of, you know, Priscilla was a minister in the church, and all kinds of women that were ministering in the church in the Book of Acts that you can see. And so, uh, I don't I don't want to limit uh, women in, in ministry at all no. uh, or to not be an elder, even though, uh, yeah, you don't you don't see a lot you don't see uh, specific examples of of, uh, the, of the New Testament when it talks about you know, the, it should be the husband of one wife. Yeah. You didn't say the wife of one husband. But uh, I don't have a problem with a, a woman being an elder. That's awesome that you mentioned the um, woman is a pastor. Kelly on YouTube says, if the wife is a pastor, how can the husband lead her? Well, you know, it's, I'm not saying it wouldn't be a challenge, yeah. but, but their relationship is at, on the home front has got to be good. And, there, and, and when you come home, the husband is the leader of the home. When you go into the church setting where the wife is the pastor, then actually the husband is submitted to the wife 
uh, as her pastor. And in, in the cases that I've, I'm talking about, uh, some great friends of ours, uh, you know, uh, Sandy Kennedy and, and great Ben Kansas and Pat Lawrence and, and uh, the villages, you know, they're, they're females and their husbands, their husbands support them and serve them. But when it comes, when it comes to their marriage relationship, there is no problem that the, 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 those, those pastors now, when they go home, they're submitted to their husbands. Right. Yeah. yeah that's awesome. And it's healthy. And yeah. the churches are healthy. Amen. That's yeah, awesome. It is awesome. I know. I just know that you're setting a lot of women free because Praise this, God. Is, this is spoken a lot. Sylvia on YouTube says, thank you, Pastor Greg. Since wives can't mold their husbands spiritually, <laughs> what should a wife do when her husband is not as spiritual as she wants him to be? Well, you just do what First Peter 3 says. You, you win him without a word. Amen. Husbands are supposed to win their wives with words. Wives are supposed to win their husbands without words. How's that working for you? <laughs> <laughs> okay, you pour on the love and affection and, and, and continue to show respect and appeal to your husband. Don't push him along, don't manipulate him, okay? And you, and you pray the Word of God over him and you pour on the affection and love and show, the, show respect for him and pray the Word over him. That's good. Samaya on YouTube, and I know you've addressed this, but you know, there's a lot of terms that get thrown around in different denominations. So are there positions in the church that are reserved only for men, such as the office of bishop or apostle? No, I don't, I don't think, I think any uh, office in the church a woman could function in as long, provided that her husband supports her, okay? And you know if the, if there, if it's causing problems on the home front, you'd, and that's true with a husband. You you don't want to go into ministry, and your wife is kicking and screaming and not not in agreement with you. Min marriage and ministry uh, magnify the place they find you. Mm. Okay, whatever's going on in your life, good, bad, or ugly, is going to be it's going to be uh, you know manifested in marriage and and also. Ministry, so I wouldn't suggest that 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 you that a woman try to function in a leadership role in in the church, uh, except that she has full support of her husband. Yeah, yeah. That's so good. Uh, Victoria on YouTube says, "So if you ha are a woman being called into ministry, what should you do next?" Uh, you should follow the Lord. Amen. You should serve in in the local church. Uh, use every opportunity you have to, to uh, serve and minister. Uh, every opportunity that the door opens up, uh, you follow. You follow God. Uh, certainly, bring, if you are married, you know, bring your husband into, uh, you know, the, your counsel about what you want to do and what's on your heart. But it's not any different than what a man would do. I mean, we have to seek God, follow Him, uh, walk through the doors that He's opening for us. And, uh, and 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 know that he's going to impact uh, he's going to impact souls eternal souls forever and ever and ever through your ministry. That's why it's so important Amen. that the that the women <laughs> be released in their ministry because there are certain things that you can minister that <clears throat> from a different perspective than than what um, men have have knowledge of, and you can help set a lot of people free. Amen. Yeah. So this last question, um, I feel like people, uh, it was guest on chat, I feel like people judge women more so. What would you say to this? That they judge women more so? Mm -hmm. Well, that's just because they've been taught wrong. Mm, that's that's because there's, there's some, you know, some underlying bias or prejudice. If you're, if you're uh, you know, you're judging, you're judging women, you ought to judge yeah. people based on not their skin color, not their gender, you know, not uh, you know any of any of their socioeconomic condition. Let's let's judge them based on the word, and yeah. and man, let's free people. Let's free people all over Amen. to minister. Man, we need the body of Christ operating in this hour. Yeah. This is the third great awakening. Amen. And what's been what's what we see happening in in the Asbury uh, mm -hmm. move of God and all these other places, Baylor University, all these places where man, this is that. Amen. And this is part of the third great awakening, 
And man, we need to be a part of it. And we need men, we need women, we need young people. Uh, man, we need boys and girls. Yes. And, and, and man, God needs you in this hour to your, your voice, your heart. He, he, he needs your, your, your gift being released. Man, let's take off all this, uh, all this bondage of, of, of I can't do this or can't do that. Let's, let's just see God about what we can do. Amen. And man, well, I'm telling you, we are, you, we are going to see this generation flooded with the knowledge of the Lord, the glory of the Lord, yeah. and it's going to come through men and women. Praise God. Yeah. He's got in the last days, He's pouring out of His Spirit on all flesh, men and women. Amen. Man, yeah. that is powerful. So I would encourage you, I know you have been blessed this evening. If you want prayer to just like solidify it, solidify it, seal it in your heart to be broken free from that bondage Amen. and that oppression of, of these wrong religious ideas, uh, please give us a call at 719-635-1111. And Pastor Greg, that was absolutely powerful. Thanks so much. Absolutely. You guys have a great night. Tune Good in tomorrow show. morning at 7 a.m. And we'll see you later. Bye. I want to let you know that we had a groundbreaking for our student housing in Karis Bible College on May the 11th. You can go to our website and find video of that. But we are now beginning to build student housing and we have a partnership entitled Foundation Builders that is just specifically dedicated towards building out our facilities here at Karis Bible College. I would appreciate it if you would pray about it and join with me in helping train people to be soldiers in this fight, to go out and help take our nation back and bring people into the kingdom of God. I guarantee you it'll be money well invested. So you can check it out, our Foundation Builders for Student Housing here at Karis Bible College. Join us every weekday for our daily live stream on Gospel Truth TV.